I have used this for ver two very different purposes and two very different classes and two very different populations. Um, so the uh, title is Two Very Different Challenges, Two Very Different Solutions. Uh, one of the things, and we've seen with the math group, they all seem kind of similar, but it turns out you know, math is very different than art in terms of the solutions to make CCC Confer work for us. And that's one of the things I like about CCC Confer is no one tells us how we have to use it. And we can use it how we want, and I found out sometimes I use it in different ways, as we'll see. Um, this is me commuting to work, by the way, uh, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so the, first, the first challenge that I had was something called the Casey. Many of you might know what it is. It stands for the California High School Exit Exam, which is an exam that all students in high school have to take and pass in math and English in order to get a high school diploma. If they don't pass by the time they're finished with 12th grade, then they get to watch their class walk and graduate, and they don't get to. So what happened is the chancellor's office said, well, we can't just have them sit at the bench watching their class graduate and then going home to work at McDonald's or something. Uh, we gotta provide them some education so that they have chances when they're 18, 19, and 20 years old so they can still graduate from high school. Um, the other challenge I've got, and I'll get to the challenge as we go, this is, is statistics. And we've heard a little about statistics, um, and I'll talk about some other issues and some, well, some issues that were brought up but not, not resolved, and not just in statistics, but some of, you other, some of the others of you had the same issues but didn't resolve them, and I have a possible resolution to make things work, okay? And again, it's a completely different model than the model we use for the Casey. So I'm gonna start with the Casey, because it's first on the list, and it's also the first thing I ever did in terms of online teaching. Again, before the Casey and before CCC Confer, I was never gonna do an online class. It was not gonna happen. I had a zillion materials to help out my students on the internet, but I was not gonna do an online class because I didn't want to say, go look at the internet, read what you can, and come back and take a test. Mm -hmm. To me, that's not teaching. It, it's not instruction. And then CCC Confer came out, and then I was happy. And I talked to our Casey group, and the Casey group, it was a $2 million grant. And the challenge of this grant, in terms of who these students are, these students are unmotivated. Okay? These students, because they're 18, 19, 20 years old, and they have not passed the Casey. These are students that have failed it. They get to try about seven times or so. Yeah. Didn't they start when they're sophomores? Uh-huh, they start when they're sophomores and they keep taking it over and over and over. And it, it, it's, like, it's like getting beaten up over and over, you know, bam, 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 <laughs> okay? And guess what, I'm next, right? Um, and the last thing I wanna do is the same thing that they've been doing. So. These are very animated students. They hate math. I mean, not like other people hate math. They despise math. Math is what has ruined them because it's what's kept them from getting their diploma. Okay, absolutely kept them. So another issue is they are all over California. We're Tahoe. In fact, I researched it and talked to our high school because I said, hey, I'll get all of our high school students in this situation. Okay, and she joined us. <laughs> <laughs> So we're Tahoe, and it's kind of the issue that you had. This is, the, this is a niche group, but they're everywhere in California. Every high school's got the problem, and they have a few. So they're all over, and that's an issue. Another issue is that a lot of these students, because they're these students that have failed math over and over and over and over again, they're the lower income students. Mm -hmm. They're the students who have um, come from another country and are just learning English. And they often don't have internet access at home. So that's a big issue, and it was a big issue for thinking about what, how we can work CCC Confer to make that work. Okay, and then, so then what happened, the Chancellor's Office, they allowed, I think it was a dozen or so grants. And the grants basically provided instruction for these students in various locations, and also, not just the grants and the community colleges, but all the community-based organizations, Boys and Girls Club would provide services, so would the adult schools, um, all, over, all over California. And most of them don't have math teachers. 
So they don't have anybody to teach these students, but they have good counselors, very motivated people to help these kids out, but no one to teach them. And they got computers, and that's what I liked. So they got computers and they got internet access. Okay, so again, the CCC Chancellor's Office uh, did an uh, RFA and we got awarded the grant to provide online instruction for all of California's Casey students who had finished high school. So we are it, okay? And when I say we, you know, I don't mean me and uh, what's his name, the robot guy? <laughs> Bobo. <laughs> no, this was a group, this was a group from um, the UCs, the Cal States, um, community colleges, um, the U Los Angeles Unified District and, and CBOs. And I, I got to head it, which was kind of fun, but a big headache also, you know, how it works. So here's what we did. Here's what our solution was. So the first thing we decided was we want to be able to provide instruction. So we provided it using bi-weekly sessions. Students would come in to these community-based organizations. Some of them would be the libraries, and librarians don't help in math. Okay, some of them would be the community colleges. Some would come to um, uh, adult schools, if you know what that is, there's adult education programs, and they often don't have math teachers. And I would be their teacher, okay? And so they'd be all over. Sometimes we'd have big groups in one, one um, area. Los Angeles had a big group, and they'd all come in. They didn't have a math teacher, but I was their teacher, and they had a counselor in that, in that area. So the counselors would, again, be very supportive. One thing that I couldn't do, because they're all over California, is find the students. So that wasn't my job, the jo that was the job of the counselors. And they did a nice job getting the students. I don't know how they got these students to actually come in and do math. It's pretty hard once they're 19 and they're out. <coughs> we also wanted to make sure that it was a non-credit course. This is a zero unit course um, because we didn't want to have to deal with paperwork in terms of um, documentation or whatever. And the students are very, usually very low income, but it's too hard for them to figure out how to get the uh, BOG waiver or anything like that. So we made a non-credit course, we called it Math by 50. And I did a training for our tutors in our math tutoring lab. So we had what we called our Casey computer, which was a computer that stayed on CCC Confer. We had what was called a static classroom, and I was told that that's a, a special thing. I thought maybe everyone got one, but I guess not. We had a static classroom, so I shouldn't advertise it too much. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we had a static classroom where it was on always so that the tutor could be there whenever a student popped in. And the tutors trained, I trained the tutors how to use CCC Confer and how to use it effectively. And I'm not going to go into too many of the details because they're the same details that you've been hearing all day. <laughs> but I can say that all the things that you say worked, um, I also understood and, and showed the tutors how to work with. So here's how a weekly session kind of looked. The first thing that would happen is that these groups would meet. Sometimes it would be one big group in Los Angeles, and, but more often it would be a bunch of little groups, two students, two students down in some area in Alpine County, two students over in Humboldt, two students in San Francisco. And all these little two students would come together, but can together virtually, be helped not by a mathematician, but be helped by a counselor. And counselors don't need to know the math to be able to turn the computer on and make sure that these students are on task because these students need to know how to be on task because that's an issue for them. So the counselor set the rules. In fact, they had one instance where one of the students asked the other student on a date <laughs> in the middle of a CCC confer session. <laughs> so it was a learning process. Huh? It was the same room, but it was using CCC to confer. <laughs> and what the student didn't know is that I get to see everything they're writing. <laughs> so yeah, I assisted a little bit. So, so I learned a little bit on you know, setting, the, setting boundaries, setting the rules. Uh, other things is, big rule, you can never dish someone else for trying. Okay? And I don't, but a student can't do it to another student. That hasn't been mentioned here, but I'm, I'm hoping that you all have the same rule. That you're allowed to give comments about other students and it always has to be positive. Um, so that was a big rule I set. There are other rules that I set, um, or the counselor set in this case. My first five minutes of class was um, a greet and warm up problem. 
So what I would do is I would have a problem up there on the CCC Confer whiteboard for them to work on that wasn't too hard. It didn't necessarily need my explanation. With these students, though, everything was hard. Okay. So it might be, here's a rectangle, and I show a 5 and a 4, and they have to find the area. It sounds really easy, um, but it isn't to these, this group. And they would work on this problem while the rest of the students are logging in. And as they log in, I greet them, and I always greet them by name, and I give them chat privileges. Um, I give them no other privileges. Um, the first week I did it, I gave everyone every privilege. It was a free-for-all. <laughs> and I had no whiteboard left. <laughs> and so I learned my lesson. Um, so I give them no privileges until I get through and start regular problems, and then I give them one at a time. So I'll say, one, um, you know, we have this you know, x plus 2y equals 4. Here's the grid. Draw a point on the graph. And Juan has to go and plot one point on the graph. And then I'll have Stacy draw a point on the graph. So one at a time for doing the whiteboard. Or again, it becomes pandemonium. Mm -hmm. uh, I also found out right away these students, and I think maybe all math students, because I found out the same thing with stats, they will not talk. They do not talk, but they love to chat. Mm -hmm. They love to chat. And I learned chat speak, too. Yeah, I learned chat speak. I can give you all kinds of abbreviations for all kinds of things. And my students taught me chat speak. So it was all I've it's all chat based. And I've never had better participation, especially with this group of students that they're used to hiding in the shadows. Mm -hmm. And these students did not hide in the shadows. They chatted and chatted and chatted and chatted. And sometimes I you know, would have to ignore them because of so much. <laughs> I would prepare the PowerPoint in advance. But I did something a little different than I think everyone else does. And it, maybe, maybe my solution is not the best. I do a, ha a half PowerPoint. I do that with my stats also. Is that I do this PowerPoint, and then I capture the PowerPoint and paste it onto it. I know you could automate it and put it in. But if I paste it onto, then I can move it around later, and I can draw on the bottom and over and anywhere, and I, can, and I can use it as a screenshot instead of a PowerPoint. I found it, the resolution was better, and I also found it worked better for, for teaching. And it didn't take very long to go through each of my PowerPoints, there are 10 or 15 of them, and just quick paste, grab, new screen, paste, grab, new screen, paste, grab. That's about two minutes. You know, for an hour of making a PowerPoint, two minutes is not too bad to paste and grab. Um, so that's kind of how the PowerPoints are prepared and pasted in. So the bottom half is always blank. The bottom half is always blank. I think you do the same, except that you did the right half, didn't you? Yeah, well, I see it. It's a, you know, Smart. Yeah. a portion of the problem, and then there's something below it. There's always space. There's always space, and you have space, and it looks like you had space, too. And that's like the math group. We know. We need space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just like you guys, I never have the problem worked out in advance. Beca and because you never know what the students are going to need and how many steps they're going to need. OK, so KC and CC con C confer. I almost solely use the whiteboard. Occasionally, I would do a web tour. We had a program with it. I decided that I'm going to really focus on CCC confer and not talk about all the other stuff that went with it. There was a program with it, and CCC confer was really nice to show them how to use the program that went with it, okay. or show them how to use some of the games that I've written so that they can go find it and then play. They love my games. Sometimes it was hard to get them off. Um, so that was how I w worked with it. Um, the, students, the students get access to the whiteboard again one at a time, not all at once. That just never happened. I use the webcam in the meet and greet part, five minutes. And then after that, it's just my voice. Uh, there's bandwidth issues. It, it just worked, seemed to work a little better without the webcam once I started getting going with the problems. And as long as they see my face once, I'm not that good looking. So you know, they don't want to see my face the whole time. So it was good enough for to see it at the beginning. Um, there was a, a little story I've got, a short story. I uh, invited my dean to come and view one of my sessions in KC. And I'm in the middle of doing my KC thing and you know, talking with the students. And as I think Mark said, you, it was one of you said, you, you're doing so many things at once. So at the same time, I'm. Uh, typing out problems and answering questions, looking with this eye at the chat, right? And then trying to 
trying to deal with other issues that might come up and you know, reading out problems and talking, and I hear the door open, I figure the dean's coming in, right? And I don't even have time to look. I'm just working and working and working and getting it through, and you know, Casey, the session went well, I was happy with it, and the next day I walk in my dean's office and I said, how did it go? And she said, oh, we really enjoyed it. And I went, we really enjoyed it? Well, what I didn't know is she brought the president, the vice president, and the other three deans into my office. And they were all standing behind me, and I didn't even know it. <laughs> Which is good, because I've probably been way nervous. <laughs> so um, I am so focused, and a fourth thing isn't going to happen. I think you mentioned that. It's just a lot of work, but it's good work. It's happy work. I feel good at the end of the day. I'm tired, or at the end of the time, I'm tired, but I'm tired in a good way. Um, a lot of energy exertion. Um, some, su some successes and challenges that we've had. The participation at the different centers was really high, and in fact, it increased around 50% at the centers that they did research in. Unlike some of these others, we had real research. Um, we had UC Santa Barbara, their um, Gavert School of Education and graduate team, it was more than one, it was like five of them or so, did basically, they focused just on our Casey project for their dissertations and stuff that year. It was kind of neat. Um, it's kind of long and convoluted to explain all that. So I didn't want to talk about all the research, but there was re real research and participation was, again, about 50% increased compared to before. It was hard to get the numbers on students passing, but um, they definitely went up by a lot. They went from something like 30% to 60% pass rate. And for students who have failed seven times, if you can get, a, if you can get anything over 30%, you're doing great. So we did have a great pass rate. Um, students passed, as we said. And the centers, just a qualitative evidence, all the counselors said everything went great. Okay. There's always little glitches. And here's one glitch. It is my absolute nightmare. And you got to do something about our lightning. <laughs> <laughs> so should I call help about the lightning problem? <laughs> should, should I call the helpline about the lightning Don't problem blame. here? No. A blame, OK. <laughs> Uh, and that did happen, and it happened more than once. <laughs> and lightning strikes in Tahoe. Wow. <laughs> lightning strikes in Tahoe, and you lose electricity for two seconds, and of course it's over. Yeah. And then you hope you have people by the time your computer gets fired back up again. Um, so that's, that was actually the biggest problem, I think, was lightning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Huh? No one went off the wall. Yeah. I don't know, lightning went out, and we lose our power supply at the end of that. <laughs> Oh, no, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, yeah. We're, we're Tahoe. We're not, we're not the city. <laughs> yeah, no, lightning, would, lightning strikes and it takes us out. So, yeah, it happened. In fact, when I saw the storm come, I'd warn the students, look, you know, any time we may lose it. And a lot of times, you know, the good thing is you usually can tell beforehand because you hear it coming. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the bad news. The worst, worst challenge is... On the same day, on the same day that we won the national award for the best educational tech, use of technology in education in the state, in the nation, for I forget what they called the award, was the day that the government took away our funding. When was that? <laughs> Last year? That was uh, late October. Yeah, so we lost. That's when he was cutting everything. Everything, yeah, everything. Yeah. You just line on the whole thing, yeah. yeah. So unfortunately, this program's over. <laughs> 